here with you, aka BHS82 apostrophe, with episode eight of my ongoing Space 1999 series, um, the Guardian of Pre, uh, eighth one in line, produced, uh, first aired back in uh, November 13th, 1975. Uh, so I was only five, and to think I already saw Jaws in the theater, it's a bit eerie to think about. Um, di uh, directed by Charles Crichton, again, uh, written by one Christopher Penfold. I have to say, man, this is a, a very well-written story uh, episode, if you will. Uh, guest appearance, man, by uh, the beautiful Catherine Shell, man, who plays the servant to the Guardian. We'll see her in year two. Uh, for the whole year, man, because she basically takes over for Bergman, I believe, uh, as a character named Maya, if I'm right. I haven't seen any of year two, but I hear good things about her. Um, sad to think we're losing Bergman eventually, but I got to enjoy him while you have him, right? Uh, and then, uh, so you got her, right? And she's in the new uh, Rob Zombie uh, Monsters movie uh, as, uh, I want to say, Zoya Krupp, something like that is her character name. Um, and so, uh, yet... Mark her up as yet one more that uh, Rob Zombie pulls out of the retirement bin and uh, puts uh, puts to good use. So looking forward to seeing Catherine Schell in that movie. Uh, hopefully she's not terribly drowned out by makeup and stuff. But we will see, right? Uh, Michael Culver uh, also guest appears uh, as one of the astronauts that we see very early on. Uh, the uh, eagle that goes off to Paris to ascertain um, what it's like. And anyways, uh, you know him, uh, maybe one of the greatest films ever made. Uh, of course, the, one of the great lines, apology accepted, Captain Nita. That's Michael Culver, man. It's Michael Culver. Uh, so he's an astronaut at the beginning and, uh, and, and a good role too, I have to say. Uh, and one John Lee Barber is another astronaut. He'll actually be on like three episodes. It's interesting. And so anyways... Uh, so, but Catherine Schell is the big headlining uh, guest appearance, uh, right? As the uh, guardian of the, uh, or servant to the guardian of, of Puri, right? So basically, what do you got going on here, man? Uh, in this episode, uh, we're introduced to this new planet, Puri. Uh, and they are trying to ascertain whether or not they can colonize it or not. Uh, the computer seems to be extremely vague. Uh, in what information it is given to the detriment of Koenig, who can't understand why all of a sudden this computer is having a hard time. Well, that's because this computer is being slowly but surely taken over by the the, 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 the powers uh, of Pre. And uh, even though there is no human life per se on there, there is a sort of mind-driven power uh, that seeks, that is wanting to basically... Uh, bring in the residents of Moonbase Alpha, um, ultimately uh, to their own demise. Um, how much um, with purpose and intent, I mean, how evil is this, this thing on Puri? Um, I'm not sure if we're really, I mean, other than, other than we'll see a scene with, um, uh, with uh, Catherine Schell's character where she will literally give the order uh, to all those that are now down there on the planet uh, orders to kill Captain Koenig um, because he really is the stumbling block between total control over all these people. Uh, so there is a bit of a um, um, evil sense there, I guess. Uh, but the evil that lurks here runs much thicker underneath uh so really in the beginning the computer starts to go crazy uh Puri is trying to take over and will take over uh the computer banks as it begins to influence these people that anything and everything they've ever striven for in life is to be found here on this planet and really once they're there uh they're they will be uh catatonic um they'll just basically just stand there in place and just it's like the happy pill in Brave New World or something. Uh, it's Invasion of the Body Snatchers from, what is it, 56, I think it was. Um, the uh, Dr. Miles uh, Bennell uh, that we see there in the original Invasion. All that he stands against is not so different way what Koenig stands against. Um, a, a, a ruling entity that seeks to strip human emotion and want 
and desire to be left alone, to live out their own purpose, uh, seeks to strip all that away and just be content with a group of catatonic um, people living in bliss. But as we find out, the people who used to live on Puri, uh, basically to their own demise, have created the situation and place that will end with their demise. Really, because once you are stripped of all purpose, um, what is there to live for? Eventually die. And so there is something really uh, eerie about the uh, intent of this entity to continue to replicate what it has already done and basically killed off everyone on this planet. It's going to do the, the same again. So you've got this crazy, crazy uh, stuff with... Uh, the moon alpha um moon base alphas uh, uh citizens or occupants whatever uh who basically fall under its spell and will all eventually be transported of their own seemingly free will uh to this planet and coney goes out of his freaking mind he doesn't know how to stop it he doesn't know how to contain it uh and really for a moment he's like all that there is left of the human desire to express self-identity and uh, sort of like our, our Dr. Miles, right? From Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And it also calls to mind uh, uh, Russia's song, Tom Sawyer, and uh, any mind that is not for rent uh, to anything, right? Uh, and so this is the scary part when any entity, and it can be government, it can be whatever it is, seeks to be that overarching authority over you where you can't breathe anymore um and that's uh that's always a scary thought and this sort of the idea of the invasion of the body snatchers i think runs deep underneath and that is the fear of loss of identity and being tricked or duped into a a, a state of bliss that ultimately is your own demise because without real purpose there's nothing to live for you die and so you know koenig uh you know will ultimately find a way uh to be the um monkey wrench i guess in this whole um attempt by pre to uh do just that and he will be successful in the end of course right <laughs> he's still got all rest of this year to get through in a year too so we know he's going to be successful to a degree and uh but it is uh it is eerie i mean there's some really interesting visuals here when you look at it and just go yeah that is that's scary that is really scary in fact it i uh, was revisiting this like yesterday and so I, I actually threw on the old invasion of the body snatchers and uh because it just there's there's a connection there uh between the two and um and so uh so koenig moves to do what he needs to do and he's able to uh, basically spoil the party for a Puri. And ultimately, in the end, he's able to retrieve all his people back and seemingly destroy the Guardian of Puri by actions he will take. Um, but ultimately, in the end, it's not destruction that the uh, uh, that are uh, that our people from Moonbase Alpha bring to Puri, um, because destruction had already come out of its own initiative, um, or doing. It's actually life that will come to Puri as a result of Koenig's success. And even the question is left at the end by Koenig that maybe they should have just elected to stay there now knowing what will take place on Puri. But well, then we wouldn't have any more adventures, right? Uh, so, very glad they chose not to stay on Puri, but to get back in their Eagle Ones and head back to Moon Base Alpha and continue our adventure throughout uh, the universe, as they say. Uh, so, uh, very, uh, very interesting um, episode. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Um, I think that pretty much hits a lot of my thoughts i really did enjoy it um and it just seems like um it seems like with every episode i enjoy more and more and with every episode i want to get my mind more and more wrapped around it and it only seems to be getting better and so i, I i'm curious 
I'm curious to see this continue along. Uh, right, and I'm very, very, very curious. Already knowing a little bit about a little about a little about year two, it is a bit of a step off, and so I'm curious that when this year comes to an end, and we're off in year two, I'm curious to see how that will go. Uh, knowing that some of the best episodes are still in front of us here in year one, uh, so the Guardian of Pre. Um, Catherine Shell, have you ever seen it? Um, what do you think about it? Um, have you revisited it of late? Uh, I know of one uh, who has actually bought, got the box set uh, and uh, is reliving all these experiences. And uh, it's one of those shows, man. It's one of those shows that I think uh, once you re get back, it's not even really you're revisiting it. It's you're reliving it and you've forgotten just how much it perhaps impacted you as a little kid, perhaps. I mean, for me, I mean, I was six, seven years old when I was watching these shows, playing with the toys and all that. But now that, you know, I'm where I'm at today, I can look at this with, you know, a completely different perspective. And yet I'm falling in love with it much the same. And, uh, and pre my appreciation level probably is going through the roof for this show, all in all. And I am, I'm telling you, I'm so glad uh, Shout Factory put out this box set. It is an absolutely amazing. Uh, if you haven't, I mean, seen it, I mean, it is just an amazing, uh, yeah, uh, year one, year two in a supplemental desk. Um, but uh, an amazing, amazing release by Shout Factory. And uh, well worth it, I think. Anyways, uh, stay tuned, man, because next is episode nine and. Uh, and I can't, I'm, I wish I could remember which one it is. I can't remember which one it is. Um, maybe I'll start, maybe with this one, I'll start putting in the show notes down below uh, next episode, uh, just in case you want to follow, because uh, these do run out of order. Uh, I am going along the production order, not the release order. So anyways, as always, we end these things off with Go Bills. <laughs>